Happy Friday, everyone. Um, I wanted to sit down and make a video uh, talking about some of the stuff that might be going on right now and, and try and use you know some of what's going on right now to use it as motivation. Um, now, like I said, Fridays, Fridays is our family fun night. Uh, tonight, April 3rd at 6.30 on our Facebook page is our family fun night. Um, I invite everybody to over there just to come watch us have fun. Those are staying there. I'm not transferring them over to Facebook or over to YouTube. So I wanted to put something in its place here. And I think talking about some of the stuff that's been going on will be not only hopefully put motivationally, but can also help you mentally um, during this time. So the main thing I want to talk about is uh, for where I am in the state of Michigan, our governor just announced all schools will be closing for the rest of the academic year and switching to online learning. Now, I want to say that I want to preface, preface this by saying I'm not a teacher. I am not a school teacher by any means necessary. So I cannot fully empathize with the teachers. Um, but I can't empathize on this level for me being a youth and children's ministry director, um, where I will still have the ability to meet with my kids and my youth group um, every week once we're allowed to go back to uh, physical meetings. You know, these teachers don't have that input, and I've seen it to where schools have been such a uh, wide help for a lot of families, um, the teachers go out of their way, provide a lot of their own resources, and dedicate the time and the energy and um, just the mental the, the mental awareness to help take care of and raise certain kids that you know might not be able to get that type of nurturing that they need at home. And you know, for teachers that had to cut their year short because of this and didn't get to see a lot of the goodbyes. I'm friends with a lot of teachers on Facebook, and I, I will say they are really hit hard because of this, too, because there is a part, and the part where I can sympathize with, about, you know, coming in every day, seeing the kids' face, you know, get to, getting to interact with them um, in person, and it's just been a you know, it, it's a blessed experience to be a part of, and for that to have been cut short due to uncontrollable manners, it, it, it's it's rough, and I and I could definitely sympathize with the teachers on this one too. And I know um, for the kids, you know, where some kids are, you know, could be celebrating an early, you know, summer vacation. Some kids need that time at school to hang out with friends, to talk to other people their age, to you know, talk with the teachers to, you know, to just to be in a different environment because being in one spot for so long can get you cooped up, can drive you a little stir crazy. Excuse me. And um, I get that. I, I get that very much. So I hope, <laughs> I hope with whatever the route um, online learning takes, um, I know it can't replace the, you know, the face-to-face -face communication, but I'm, I pray that whatever online learning takes place, um, that teachers and educators can still try to enhance the communication side of what the school setting would provide. And I also hope that, you know, once we're able to get past this and go back to seeing each other, um, that the kids will just go back to hanging out with the kids, too. Um, you know, there's nothing that says that, um, you know, because they're switching to online learning is that the kids still can't interact with each other. You know, so this this is a good time. Or this might be a good time for the kids, uh, both young and youth, to still hang out with their friends. I know, again, don't do anything until, you know, we've gotten the okay to uh, see each other face to face. But this is a good time of utilization and i think a lot of the kids and parents can benefit from from the realization that you know school school might not be the most important thing but we're now to me we're now starting to see the value in the relationships we're starting to see the value in 
what school does on a relationship level, both between student to student and student to teacher. We're starting to see that more and more now. And it, it's, it's interesting to me um, to see that becoming such a, um, such a forethought because it's something that I, I guess I never put too much thought behind of. Um, but in a recent talk I had with somebody, you know, even for me and my level, you know, not seeing the kids every week and, it, you know, it, it, it's really taken a mental toll on me, especially, you know, with being, if you don't know and hadn't heard, I've been sick for the last two, uh, two, two and a half weeks with a, uh, severe stress induced, uh, work or not work cold, chest cold. Um, and I'm now getting back into the swing of things and have developed my work at home schedule. And it's been nice, and I've still been able to interact with the kids every so often, but I can't interact with everybody. I don't have any, I don't have everybody's contact information because our church is closed, so I can't talk to everybody. And there's some of the kids that I know that come, that come to our youth group to avoid, you know, all the crap that goes on outside the four walls of the church. And to know that that experience now and that opportunity is being limited um, and being taken away from them you know, it can play a way bigger role on their mental health and their mental development as well with not, not having that, you know, in-person communication. So, so I, I understand where all that comes from. And my hope is that once all this blows over and once we get back to seeing each other again, that not only can we utilize the in-person relationships now, but we can put more value into, you know, treating each other with respect, treating each other kindly and realizing that there's value in uh, person to person relationships. So, and I hope that this has been a time to really sit down and reflect on that, you know, and then there's part of me too, that, you know, our seniors, I have uh, four seniors in my youth group this year and, you know, my sister's a senior too. So, to see their, you know, their school year cut short has been uh, heartbreaking, for sure. And I, I know this is a time of celebration. You're wrapping up your last year of high school. You're getting ready to start the next chapter in your life. And, you know, the springtime is when everything hits. Prom, commencement, you know, vacation, spring break. Now, all this is a time where that would have hit, and now it's being bogged down this way. And I pray, and I just saw from our high school that uh, they've put tentative rescheduling days for the big events like this, prom, commencement, etc., which is really cool. And I hope and pray that more schools take that initiative to give the kids that, because this is something that's not their fault. You know, they're suffering from this just like the teachers are and all the other school faculty are. So it was cool to see that um, take place, and I hope, like I said, and I hope and I hope and pray other schools too uh, take a similar route. But at the same time, high schoolers, I know you're going into this this season of your life now with, you know, a lot of depression, fear, doubt, anxiety, with the state of the world. You know, your senior year being a bust, and I hope and pray that you realize too that. At the end of all this, you're going to come out probably one of the strongest senior classes uh, ever. Dealing with everything you've dealt with, the transitions that you're making during this, you know, high time of anxiety, you're going to come out way stronger than a lot of other senior classes, um, especially ones I've seen. And um, I, I, I've been praying for you guys. I've been with you guys. I hope everything's going all well, uh, going well for you guys. And just when all this is over, realize, too, that there's still a time for celebration, even if you can't do it at school, you know, get together with friends, talk to faculty, talk to, talk to your school, see if you can help them start something, too. You have uh, just about as equal of a right to set something up as your school does. And working together is going to be one of the best routes to do, coming together and creating something that shows that the 2020 class is got to be one of the best and needs to come together to celebrate that. And it, it'll be, it'll be weird. 
you know, say with like the high school, my high school that I was looking at having their commencement ceremony in July when it would normally be in June. You know, you don't normally you don't normally do those things in the middle of summer, but celebrate, celebrate that, celebrate that the ability still was able to happen. Um, and just don't don't feel alone. Don't feel alone. I, I've seen this a lot and I share this with you. You know, we might be all going through the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. There's still time to celebrate, to rejoice, to see the good behind all this. And I, I pray that, you know, you seniors, my seniors, all seniors, just take some time to sit and reflect. And the good to take away is now you get to see what online classes are like if, oh, when you hit high school. Um, this will be a good, honestly, and, you know, this will be a good kind of practice exercise for you. So online classes are going to be probably a key thing for you in college. So there you go. Now you have a chance to start. Um, so, but just take care of yourselves. I will say, um, watch your mental health through all this. Uh, my mentality has been so, uh, so insane the last couple weeks that I'm just now starting to come out of it. And, you know, that is something that we got to watch during this time. And especially we, since we live in a time of communication and talking with one another, being with one another, being social, that now we're socially distant from each other and, that can play a severe role in your mental health. So know that, you know, it's going to be okay. And don't don't pay attention to social media all that much. Watch the news to keep yourself informed every so often. Don't do it always because that won't help you all that much either. And just take a breath and celebrate the good. Celebrate the good. God always will ring good out of the bad. You know, and there's good that's still coming out. There's good that's still being shown. There's good that's still happening out in the world. And we're called, as we learned from uh, Wednesday's youth group meeting, to be the light in a time of darkness. And we might feel like there's a dark cloud hiding over the world right now, but God's got the world in his hands. And we're called to shine the light of Jesus to not only others, but it'll help shine within us. So I pray that... This time can be a time of reflection and a time of celebration for not only our seniors, but our children, our youth, and everybody involved. Um, I know this is kind of a crazy time, but we live in a world with crazy people. <laughs> so let, let's take a step back. Let's breathe. Let's reflect. Let's celebrate. Let's enjoy each other's company. You know, now, you know, this is a time where we can't take everything for granted. You know, some people, you know, tomorrow's not even granted for them. And tomorrow's not granted for any of us, really. So we got to take the time to celebrate today. And there's a scripture that I've seen going around. And I can't think of the name, but or I can't think of the reference. But I know it synopsizes or it paraphrases to say, you know, you take care of today for God's got tomorrow. So focus on you today. You know, check in with yourself. You know, if you've been laying around, you know, get dressed like you would be going to school or work, you know, do something productive, read, write, draw. Um, next Friday on our, for our Facebook Live, we're going to do an Easter craft of some kind. So, you know, try it, you know, do something you wouldn't normally do. I actually have a, I actually have my ukulele that I just picked up for the first time in a couple months yesterday, and I'm going to try and uh, test myself to learn a song to learn a basic song from it. Um, so I, I challenge you. That'll be a challenge. It's your homework. Do something that you haven't done in a while or do something new. Try something new. There's a lot of different things. You still have the internet, and the internet's a wide place to learn something. So, and now is the best time because what else do you have to do? <laughs> so I'm going to end this here. I'm going to pray for you guys, um, and I hope you will continue to check us out both on YouTube and on Facebook. This Sunday, April 5th, we have our Sunday School lesson coming out where we're taking a step back from our regular, regular, regularly scheduled uh, Sunday School lesson to look at the basics of the Bible. So we have Sunday content um, that'll start here on YouTube. We have a Wednesday live stream that uh, we do our youth lessons on that will later get uploaded to YouTube. We have our Friday Family Fun Night um, and then uh, motivational sit-down talk 
um, Fridays on YouTube. So there's a lot. I'll post everything in the description down below. Thank you guys. Let me pray out. Father God, we give thanks. We give thanks for the glory that you still shine on us. We're in a time that shows a lot of dark and a lot of suffering, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. But we know that you are a cure for all of that. We know that you're holding us all tightly, you know, and you're feeling what we feel. You know, if we're depressed, you feel it too. If we're angry, you feel it too. And we know that you sympathize with us. And Lord, I ask that you, you know, be with all of us during this time and even afterwards that we can continue to do the work you've called us to do. Lord, we give thanks for another day, another gorgeous spring day. We give thanks for the ability just to wake up in the morning to take the first breath, to set foot on the ground you've blessed us with. Lord, we also ask that you be with all of those suffering right now. Be with those that are dealing with the illness, the families of those that are dealing with the illness. You know, support the families that have suffered death and loss during this time as well. Be with all the essential workers, the essential staff, hospitals, doctors, nurses, everybody involved, everybody that's helping keep, it, keep humanity running. Lord, we know this is an insane time, but you're the God of all gods. You're the healer of all healers. I ask that you bless us, that you send the cure, send the vaccine, and, and lift us from this. Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. On that note, see you guys on Sunday here on YouTube. Have a good one. Bye.